So, so uh, let's suppose you want to buy something, but uh, your uh, your existence existing suppliers cannot cannot provide you this material. So you need a new supplier. Where do you go find a new supplier? There are several different sources you can go to when looking for a new supplier. Okay, uh, the first one is uh, Institute for Supply Management. Okay, and, and other purchasing association. I'm I'm just giving this as an example. Okay, and there are uh, directories and industrial guides. Uh, we used to have a yellow book. People used to have a big stack uh, of uh, yellow pages. Okay, uh, you can use the internet, obviously. Uh, trade associations and trade shows are are a uh, are an important source of information. Governmental agencies have also lists that you can consult. There are minority supplier directories, and, and finally, there are consulting companies. Okay, so let's look at these one by one. Uh, so the first one is Institute for Supply Management, or some other uh, purchasing association for professionals. So when you go to your uh, homepage, right on their homepage, okay which shows that this is one of their main aims, is to give you access to suppliers, okay? So discover, connect, uh, advance your career, etc. okay? So, um, so you have the membership information, uh, you can connect with other suppliers, etc. okay? So this is, this is one source, okay? Uh, another source is uh, uh, our directories and industrial guides. Okay, so this is the most traditional means. Okay, uh, a lot of this used to be in paper. Now it's uh, all of most of it is online. Okay, so you could have general directories of supply uh, suppliers like Thomas's reg Register. So this will give you suppliers in many different industries. Okay. Then you have specific in the, uh, industry directories. So, for example, you have ceramic industry. Okay, that's just for one specific industry. And uh, uh, these guides can help you focus also on specific geographic areas. So, if your business in, is in a specific location and you, you're looking for a close by supplier, okay, they can help you with that. Similarly, they can tell you about the size of the supplier, history, capabilities, etc. Okay, so this is this serves as a good starting point. So let's look at Thomas's register. Okay, so this is uh, thomasnet.com. Okay, so it says where serious buyers find qualified suppliers. Okay. So, so you have supplier discovery, uh, if you want information on suppliers, product sourcing, CAD models. Okay. So supplier discovery, 700,000 industrial and commercial suppliers. Okay. So industrial and commercial means business to business, not business to customer. Okay. Uh, product sourcer. Okay. So here, you can identify products, and then you can see which suppliers uh, provide that specific product. Okay. Uh, CAD models. Okay. What does CAD stand for? CAD stands for uh, 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 Computer Aided Design. So CAD, uh, Computer aided design okay computer aided design so so when you're looking for a part okay uh, that part uh, could 
could be uh, described as a blueprint. Nowadays, it's a computer-aided design uh, design model, and uh, that allows you to give very specific uh, details about your product. Now, you can get quotes. Okay, you can explore diversity and quality of uh, suppliers, and then you can uh, find out specific industry news. Okay, so so this is a register that will uh, help you find out information about many different industries. This does not specialize in one specific industry. Now, this particular uh, website, this particular directory, is about the ceramic industry. So all the firms, all the suppliers you will find here are in the same industry, the ceramic industry. Okay? And uh, you can advertise, you can go to the directory, and here's how you do search okay there are more search options i didn't include them here you can go and, and look on your own but uh, you could just enter a, uh, a keyword here and you can search among products or you can search among companies okay uh, you can look for expanded listings okay uh, you can uh, or browse through uh, different uh, types of products, for example, batching, material handling, uh, decorating, environmental safety products, uh, firing and drying, forming and finishing. So these are different product categories offered in this industry. Now, internet search, of course, the first thing a lot of people do these days is just to Google, okay? So uh, the advantage is it's easy and uh, it'll give you many results, but potentially it may give you too many results. and It may be difficult to sort out these results. And the downside is uh, the, some of the results you get from Googling is uh, may not be legitimate okay uh, there could be uh, companies set up as uh, as online frauds or, or some other devious uh, for some other devious purposes okay so you have no uh, assurance of legitimacy in uh, online searches now this problem can be solved, the legitimacy problem can be solved when you contact trade associations and ask for a list of their uh, members. Or uh, a very good idea is to go to trade shows and see what kind of products are offered because you will find a lot of suppliers at the same time in the same place. Okay, So this could be an efficient way to see and talk to many potential suppliers at the same time, okay? And plus, this solves the legitimacy issue. So, let's suppose um, you want to buy cheese, and you're looking for a supplier that will provide you cheese. Now, how do you how do you find and and who would be the best supplier uh, to provide you with cheese, okay? Uh, I didn't know this, but I found out that there is American Cheese Society, okay? Apparently, there is a society like that. And apparently, they have a huge membership, many cheese producers. And apparently, they have events and education on cheese making. The internet's great anyway so so and then uh, they have competitions cheese competitions okay and I looked at their uh, conference they have many events uh, they have uh, 
Cheese Camp 2015. Uh, they they list the attendees. Okay, that will be a good that would be a good source of information for finding cheese suppliers. Uh, the schedule of the conference, pre-conference events, educational se sessions. Uh, so all these all these resources are available for you to find a good cheese supplier. Now, you can also uh, consult with government agencies for potential suppliers. And at this point, you might be wondering what what would government have to do with commerce and business. Well, it depends uh, on what part of the government uh, you're, uh, you're talking about. So there's the Department of Commerce, they can help you find suppliers. There are chambers of commerce and there are embassies. Okay, so let me show you a couple of examples. For example, this is uh, the State of Georgia website. And Georgia has a manufacturing directory. So the state of Georgia has a list uh, of manufacturers in their state. So if you want to find a supplier in Georgia that will manufacture a certain product for you, you can go to this website and search under a company name, under a keyword, description, product name, uh, you can specify the number of employees in terms of how big or how small you want this supplier to be. Uh, you can uh, look under locations. You can restrict your search to a geographic area. Or you can uh, uh, look at different industries. For example, aerospace industry, motor vehicles, biomedical, furniture, printing paper, etc. Okay? So state governments, for example, can provide you a list of potential suppliers. And then um, this is uh, uh, the U.S. Commercial Service okay, uh, in Berlin. So let's say you're a German company and you're looking for a supplier from America. So where do you go? Okay. So the, the German embassy in Berlin, I'm sorry, the American embassy in Berlin can provide you uh, a list of contacts uh, in America that can be potential suppliers, okay? So here you have uh, the, the consulate, uh, okay, uh, contact information, and you can cons uh, 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 contact these people at the American Embassy in Berlin and they can guide you to suppliers in America and of course this is true for all embassies of all countries now uh, minority supplier directories and this is important for some companies maybe not all companies but uh, but the uh, small business administration has a website of minority suppliers and you can go there uh, and find appropriate uh, qualified uh, minority owned suppliers so here's the website it's called 8a sources okay so 8a means these are minority suppliers okay you have alphabetical listing you can search by industry, you can search by location, state, okay? And this is a good place to start looking for minority uh, suppliers, okay? Now, so you want to find suitable suppliers. And, and then you come up with a list of names. Now, this list can be long or short and that will have an impact on the purchasing process. How so? Well, you can have many suppliers because what you're looking for may be a commodity product. Okay, What is a commodity pro product? A commodity product is undifferentiated
undifferentiated product. In other words, this product does not have a brand name. Okay, so a Dell computer is branded, a Sony camera is branded, um, you know, an Audi car is branded. Okay, so uh, but uh, generic products, commodity products. Are not branded for example gold is undifferentiated gold is gold a a gold bar is a gold bar you know there are no two different gold bars are just the exact and the same thing okay they are they are commodities or or cement cement is is cement is it's undifferentiated it's a commodity product it's it's unbranded Okay, so for commodity products, you will have many, many suppliers. Okay, for, for non-commodity products, you will have uh, a few suppliers. Okay, so these are a bit more uh, customized, okay, a bit less generic. And then sometimes... Uh, for brand name products, you will have one supplier. Okay, so if you want a um, a Toshiba laptop, okay, and if only Toshiba will do, then you have a single supplier. Okay, and sometimes this also happens quite a bit. Uh, you you may not be able to find any supplier okay so your your product uh, the product that you're looking for or the service that you're looking for or the technology that you're looking for may be so unique that nobody ever needed it before and nobody ever thought of producing it before so you have no suppliers for the product or the service or the technology you, you, you want to buy. So what do you do? You develop a supplier, okay? We're gonna talk about that next time. But, uh, but so we said uh, you're looking for potential suppliers, you can have none, one, a few, or many. And that affects your purchasing process. How so? In the following way. Okay, so the number of suppliers that you find, okay, uh, define the level of competition in a market. So if you have a single provider, you have a monopoly, okay. If you have a few suppliers, oligopoly. If you have multiple suppliers, free competition. Why is that important? That's important because the prices will be different, okay? In a monopoly, the prices will be g generally higher. In a free market competition, free competition market, the prices will be generally lower, okay? Now, the power balance will also be important, okay? So if you have a single provider, it's not only the, pr uh, the, the um, uh, the price, they can also dictate delivery terms when you can receive the product. They can dictate other terms in addition to price. And the issue of dependence is much larger in a monopoly. Why? Because you have a single provider. You don't have any other options. But in a free market with multiple suppliers, you have options, you can switch from one supplier to another, okay? And depending on how many suppliers you have, the negotiations will be different, okay? The competitive price, uh, bidding, list prices will also be different. Terms offered will be different. And the relationships, the business relationships you form with suppliers will be different depending on what kind of a market you have and how many suppliers there are. Okay. So 
So now we want to identify a list of uh, uh, potential qualified suppliers. Now the first thing is to cast a wide net. In other words, uh, try to include all potentially uh, possible suppliers. Okay? Do not eliminate suppliers easily from your list. Uh, keep your flexibility and keep your options open. Okay. Uh, be on the lookout for new providers, new companies that start up, or for existing companies that, that offer new products. Okay. And also keep an eye, open mind about substitute products. Okay. At first, when you uh, become aware of a purchasing need, and when you develop uh, detailed specifications, um, substitutes may not be the first thing on your mind. But once you have detailed substitutes, you can uh, start recognizing potential substitutes. Okay? Keep an open mind about substitutes as well. Uh, it's also important to follow technological changes and trends. Okay? So that may change your options, that may change your purchasing needs. And uh, this is also very important. Uh, also, it's important to have information about a company's history, background, past, and have business intelligence about the industry that you're looking at. Okay? Now, we have identified a purchasing need and then we went out looked at the market and now we have a list of potential suppliers now is the time to contact them and ask for bids and proposals okay so so now you have a manageable pool of the most promising suppliers, okay? So uh, you will solicit, you will ask for uh, bids and proposals, and uh, that depends on the type of product or service that you're looking for, okay? So there, there's a slight difference uh, there are slight differences in the process depending on the product. So what you're looking for may be commercially available. It may be a generic product. It could be an off-the-shelf product. It could be ready to go. And you just go and ask for a uh, bid. Okay? And they'll deliver you the product. And uh, what you're looking for may not exactly be offered, but uh, it, it may be similar to an existing product that could be modified to meet your requirements. And finally, what you're looking for may not be commercially available or available through modification. So in these cases, you, your elicitation will, will be slightly different. So let's suppose you're looking for a uh, commercially available product or service or technology or process. Uh, you can issue an invitation for bid, IFB. You can issue a request for quotation, RFQ. Uh, you can start a reverse auction or you can conduct competitive negotiations. So what are these? Uh, here's an example of an invitation to bid. Uh, this is uh, published in a newspaper. Okay. So what's, what's happening here? First of all, who issues this information? Uh, invite, who issues this information? It says right here, city of Sweetwater. Okay. So this is a local government that invites uh, a potential supplier to bid. 
Okay. So the city of Sweetwater will be accepting sealed bids for the following equipment. Okay. What are they looking for? They're looking for a 2015 Ford F-350 4x4. Okay. So as we said, this should be for an existing product, an off-the-shelf product, and this is an existing product. This is standardized, this is produced, uh, this is not modified, this is not customized, this is right off the shelf or right off the dealer lot. So what they're looking for is uh, a sealed bid, okay? So what does that mean? Uh, potential suppliers will provide bids, but they'll provide them uh, confidentially in a sealed bid so that nobody else will know the, uh, the, the, uh, the number, the figure that they're bidding. So only the supplier knows the bid and the city of uh, Sweetwater knows the bid. Other suppliers don't know how much one particular supplier uh, bid, okay? So then uh, uh, there are more details, okay? So it says, Bidders shall include pricing for complete equipment. Okay, so this price will, uh, this the price will include multiple things. Okay, uh, shipping, delivery, applicable labor to make the vehicle ready for use. So you're seeing they are listing all the acquisition costs we just listed. Okay, bid specifications, more details may be obtained by contacting, uh, by contacting Jessica Morgan at City Hall at such and such internet address. Okay. And then there's a deadline. The bids may, uh, must be submitted by Friday, October 3rd, uh, 2014 at 4 p.m. Okay. We're going to talk much more about the legal aspects of this, but Here's a disclaimer, okay? The city reserves the right to reject any and all bids, okay? And waive formalities. So what does that mean in plain English? I'm not a lawyer, but it sounds to me like the city will do whatever the city will do, okay? So they're just uh, uh, keeping a very, very, they're keeping all the options open. Okay, so this is an invitation to bid, and as you can see, it's for an existing product that needs no modification. Okay, this is RFQ, okay, RFQ, request for quotation, okay, and who issues this request? This request is issued by Chattanooga Chamber of Commerce, okay, and the address, and there is a quote ID, okay? Why do they assign a quote ID? Well, uh, request for quote, RFQ ID. This is for their records. So uh, Chattanooga Cham Chamber of Commerce is issues many RFQs and they want to keep uh, a record of these RFQs. And so they give a unique number for each RFQ that they offer okay and they say the issue date RFQ uh, close date RFQ close date means suppliers have to respond with quotations by this date okay uh, contact name contact email okay so now uh, the letter begins like this you have been chosen to participate in a request for quote so now this this has not appeared uh, on a newspaper. Okay, this is not uh, open to public. Suppliers were selected, and the Chamber of Commerce is sending letters to these suppliers. And the opening line says, "You have been chosen to elicit uh, a uh, a quotation." from okay 
So you have been chosen to participate in a request for quote RFQ for catering services for the Chattanooga area Chamber of Commerce's South Side Council. Okay, the RFQ will close on March 11, 2011, at noon. Okay, all responses to this RFQ must be submitted electronically. Uh, to this email address okay so now uh, you know by when you need to reply and you know uh, who to reply to you know you have the contact information then they provide the specifics okay they say the Southside Council is looking for a qualified vendor to provide catering services and meals to be served or uh, to approximately 30 individuals based on attendance at the monthly general membership meeting okay and then they go on and they uh, uh, give these dates okay so the catering services will be required on these three dates okay and the lunch menu should uh, include these okay and, and there's the address okay so now this is for a proposal, I'm sorry, this is for uh, for a service, not a product, and you have the uh, detailed description. Uh, another example of RFQ for a product is this. So, uh, so what... Uh, the, uh, the organization that issued this RFQ is Citizens Police Liaison Committee. Okay. So this committee is looking for uh, call center solution equipment supply, deployment and integration with internal software. Okay, this is what they need. So they're, they're looking for technology solution. Okay. So uh, the equipment specification is here okay contact information okay so this is for a product okay so another way to solicit bids and and proposals is through reverse auction now what is reverse auction uh, reverse auction uh, well a, a regular auction uh, is where you have prices going up. So somebody bids ten dollars, another person bids eleven, the next person twelve, fifteen, etc. So in a regular auction, the prices go up. In a reverse auction, the prices come down. Okay. So so let me give you an example. This is uh, from a uh, website called uship.com okay so you you have uh, something you want to ship somewhere from somewhere to somewhere in the country okay so uh, uh, what uh, what you can do is you can go to uship.com and you can say okay this is my product this is my shipment this is the point of origin. This is the point of destination. Who can do this at the lowest price? So, so what happens is that companies will start bidding, and then uh, if somebody bids, let's say, let's say ten dollars, another will bid nine dollars, eight dollars, etc., and then you will pick the lowest bid. So this is reverse auction. Okay, here's an example. Uh, this shipment uh, is, uh, I don't know if you can see this, but uh, this shipment says uh, pet rabbits need ride. Okay, so uh, weight is four pounds. Okay, the origin is Greenfield, Indiana, and the destination is Montgomery, Vermont. Okay, and the shipment will travel 897 miles. Um, and um, so there are the departure dates, August 3rd through 9th, uh, 
arrival dates August 9th okay so the shipment has to be there August 9th okay now companies are bidding how do I know there are three bids okay the three bids th three companies have already bid and this uh, bidding will end in nine days and ten hours at that time whoever has the lowest bid will win okay and now the lowest bid for right now is three hundred seventy nine dollars and if you want to bid uh, you can click here okay so this is how a reverse auction works now let's suppose uh, the product you're looking for is not available off the shelf there are similar products uh, but they need some modification so what do you do you can uh, issue an RFP request for proposal uh, you can do reverse auction as before or competitive negotiations okay here's an example of uh, an RFP okay so um, an RFP is very similar to an RFQ and it has the same uh, the same components so first of all you need to specify uh, your organizational uh, identity overview and project goals you should say okay uh, we are such and such company, such and such organization, and we're looking to do X, Y, and Z, okay? And for this, we need these kinds of products, services, technology, whatever, okay? So what are the deliverables? What are the specifications? What are the requirements, okay? And then... Uh, you should tell them the interested how the interested suppliers should uh, provide a provo proposal. What's the format going to be? Is it going to be electronic? Is it going to be sealed bid? It's going. Is it going to be some other format? Okay. And in many cases, uh, suppliers will have to provide references. Okay. So this is to establish trust. Can you? Uh, trust a particular supplier if they have good references that's a good sign okay so how will you deliver uh, the proposal okay uh, who will be contacted at the company and what is the evaluation deadline okay so these details have to be given as well now uh, we have now we have identified a purchasing need we have looked at the market and we have found some qualified potential suppliers we have contacted them for bids and proposals and they have responded so what we know uh, what each supplier has proposed now is the time to make a selection okay so um, we uh, the the advantage of um, issuing RFQs and RFPs is that when the suppliers reply to you uh, they will have a standardized or at least similar format so you can put the responses side by side and compare okay so uh, uh, once you have the proposals the proposals are not the final price okay the proposals are the beginning point for negotiations okay so let's suppose a supplier said I can sell you what you want for ten dollars Okay. you don't have to assume that's that's the final price 
can they go lower? Possibly, how do you know? Through negotiations, okay? And we're gonna devote an entire presentation to negotiations, okay? Well, at this point, you may uh, narrow down the potential suppliers to a few, okay? And you can ask for sample products, okay? Uh, and you can run tests on these sample products or, or maybe sample services to see whether they're actually meeting your requests, okay? You could ask for site visits. You want to see if they're legitimate. You want to see if they have the capability. You want to see if they're uh, uh, trustworthy, etc. And then you need to th think about what kind of a contract you want to sign with these potential suppliers. So when you compare suppliers, it's not just about price, okay? It's also about all these other things, okay? So when you're comparing proposals, you need to look at quality, reliability, capability, financial stability, and vendor location. Let's talk about these one by one. Okay, so what exactly do we mean by quality? Quality is a very, very general term. You can talk about product quality, you can talk about service quality. And quality certainly has multiple dimensions, okay? And what are some of the dimensions, okay? So quality of performance, quality of design, how beautiful something looks, uh, whether something has bells and whistles, special features, okay? whether something is durable or whether something breaks easily, okay, whether it's easy to service something, okay, uh, convenience, how easy can you get to something, okay, uh, con uh, uh, responsiveness, speed of service, okay, assurance, courtesy, consistency, compliance, and, and you can uh, add more things to this list. So quality has many aspects and it changes from product to product, from service to service, from person to person. Okay. Um, so this is one aspect that you can compare uh, the, uh, you can use to compare different proposals. Another aspect um, uh, for comparison is um, reliability, okay? Usually companies make purchases uh, which are repeated over time. In other words, uh, product, you want products delivered to you periodically over time. For example, raw materials, okay? Now, the issue is, can you trust your supplier to be on time every time? Or will they be on time sometimes and late at other times? Okay, so can they deliver? Can you trust the supplier when they promise something? Okay, do they have a solid track record and reputation for following up on their promises? Um, are they desperate to win your business so they will promise you anything, okay? Uh, or um, are they a huge supplier and do you look like a very tiny customer to them? Will they take you seriously when you want something, when you request something, okay? So these are all the important reliability issues, okay? Now, their product or service may be high quality, but will they deliver reliably? Can you count on their delivery? This is another dimension on which to evaluate suppliers. And another 
issue is capability okay um, can they deliver okay do they have the capability physical capability operational capability to provide the service or the product that you require okay do they have the technical know-how do they have the expertise do they have the talent do they have the engineers do they have the technicians do they have the people do they have the physical facilities do they have the supplies do they have the equipment needed to deliver what you need okay so to gauge their capability you can certainly request a site visit and see what their operations look like you can also uh, interview them and you can ask for references okay so this is can they deliver what you need financial stability this is very very important now companies typically uh, prefer to have a long-term business relationship with their supplier companies prefer not to change suppliers from time to time okay because once they have a good business relationship good working relationship with their supplier custom uh, companies want to keep that going because they have already invested a lot in starting that relationship and they want to keep that relationship going because they are used to it it works for them um, they know the supplier the supplier knows them you know things have been working uh, why look for some other supplier okay but the problem is sometimes suppliers go out of business and when that happens your operations might be disrupted okay so uh, when the supplier goes out of the business out of business uh, your supply chain may be disrupted you can lose a lot of customers and revenues okay so when you start working with a company you want to make sure that they are in good financial uh, condition okay you don't want them uh, to have to face a, a bankruptcy risk okay you want to work with a company that will be stable for many years to come so how do you, how do you know if a company is in a good financial situation or not there are multiple sources of information you can definitely ask for financial records from the company itself you can also go to third-party resources for example Dunn and Bradstreet is a company that provides financial information about companies there's Edgar who and Hoover's and market watch for publicly traded companies so uh, so you can get more financial information from these resources the last thing I want to uh, uh, discuss in this list is vendor location vendor location is very important okay so why is it important first of all if a vendor is close by it's easy to communicate with them it's easy to visit their sites it's easy to talk to them uh, so the communication is easy the second thing is the shipments are more reliable when the company that you're working with is located close by so a, a, uh, a close supplier will have fewer late deliveries. But if you have a supplier that's located overseas, you'll have uh, much more difficulty in logistics. Okay, So this is also an important uh, consideration in comparing proposals from various suppliers.